Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Thank you so much for joining us. Our guest is Jim Baird. Jim is at the University of California at Riverside. He is a turf grass specialist. And turf grass means something different than what I thought it was. What is turf grass? Yes, Brad, we're talking about the, li the living uh, uh, plant, uh, a grass that uh, is cut uh, short normally and will withstand traffic and uh, all those other good things. So it's not the artificial turf that you see on lawns that you think is real but is fake. It is a live plant. Right. We're not talking about the plastic. Got it. Here. Okay. Now I'm really glad you're here because as we know, we are in a massive water crisis mm -hmm. and somehow, some way, Californians need to decrease their consumption of water. As it stands now, and you'll teach us about this in the next few minutes, we are basically addicted to cool season grasses. Explain what that means. Well, cool season grasses that are, are those that are primarily adapted to cooler climates. Uh, in climate like California in general will stay green year round. Mm -hmm. And uh, with supplemental irrigation, of course, for us in uh, inland climates like Riverside. Uh, and so, Compare that to the warm season grasses the, that are, are growing, you know, in, in parts of California, especially in the desert. Uh, those grasses are much more adapted to, to drought conditions, to high temperatures. Uh, but on the other hand, on the downside, will will turn brown or go dormant uh, during the winter months. And uh, of course, the color is important uh, when it comes to turf grass. But that being said, we don't necessarily have the luxury at this point to have beautiful lawns in December. And I understand that warm season grasses or warm, warm, warm season turfs save a significant amount of water. Uh, yes, at least 20% uh, or more, uh, depending upon those particular species, uh, depending upon uh, certainly the location, the climate that you're in. So uh, when we look at uh, potential ways of, of saving water, uh, that's one of the things that we're we're currently studying at, at the University of California Riverside is is that transition, making transition from the most popular lawn species in California and throughout much of the country, which is tall fescue, to a warm season grass, as, as you mentioned before. And I understand also that these grasses have an impact on our footprint, our carbon footprint. Explain that distinction. Well, certainly uh, grasses uh, uh, take in carbon dioxide uh, from the atmosphere mm -hmm. during the process of photosynthesis. Which is a plus. Right, which is a plus. And, and, and on, on the downside, and, and certainly as we get, uh, we bear much of the, the, the blame for is are the other inputs in terms of equipment, uh, machinery, and, and the carbon that, that comes in from the, the other end. But however, uh, from the turf standpoint, uh, the, the sequestering ability of, of carbon is, is, is quite great and, and actually much more than uh, most agricultural crops. So are you saying that these warm season grasses will take in more carbon dioxide to the benefit of the environment? Uh, potentially, uh, yes, more, but uh, I think it's just uh, in terms of their physiology and their, their anatomy, uh, they're just better equipped to deal with uh, higher light intensity, with higher temperatures, with less water. And so uh, certainly I think as we move forward and, mm -hmm. and we, we want to keep turf, uh, there's a lot, certainly a lot of good benefits uh, to having turf, uh, you know, noise abatement, uh, reduction of erosion, uh, just having, well, a, having a surface for our children to play sports on. So to uh, bottom line it, if I may, what would you recommend to a residential homeowner who wants to be responsible, but at the same time wants to make sure that they have a nice lawn? at a certain level? Well, I think for most homeowners in, in California, they're, they're growing a cool season grass like tall fescue right now. I think it's just to, to uh, learn more about how to irrigate turf properly in regard to uh, you know, how often the irrigation is required and um, the length of time that's required. Jim, thanks for joining us. Okay. We appreciate it. For Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz. Back to CNN HLN.